on Billy Beck the third. And this is BB3 TV. <laughs> Hey, we're in the lion's den here at BB3 Training Center, and I'm gonna show you how to hit a speed bag. You know, my dad was a fighter, I was a fighter, so I grew up with this, and I thought if I got really good at it, that I would get the chicks. Uh, no, but it does look cool. And if you're doing an upper body workout, it only makes sense to do a warm up that works your upper body. So a lot of times people walk on the treadmill when they're doing an upper body day, like a chest and a back day, which never made any sense to me. So this is actually a great way to do two things. One, get blood flow to the upper body, and two, bring you to the present moment. Because when you're hitting a speed bag, you really can't think about anything else. And most people are either focused on worrying about something in the future or they're thinking about something else that happened in the day or playing something else. But the way you have a great workout is you get present and a speed bag is a great way to do it. So let me show you how to do it. What most people do, and most guys do, guys take the longest to learn this because they try to knock everyone out. So they're like <laughs> And you know, you gotta check your ego at the door on this. You gotta get some rhythm. And if you're white, it's gonna take a little while for you to learn, let's just face it. <laughs> so what you wanna do is you wanna stay loose, and when you hit it, you wanna create, you wanna hit it just enough to get it to move, and your hand will bypass it. So it's gonna look like this, if you can see that path of motion, it's like an oval, right? Not a uh, through it like this. And if you drop your hand too low, you're just not gonna be quick enough to get back. It's called a speed bag because you gotta be speedy. So just start with your dominant hand and you're gonna strike with the knife edge of your hand. So this part of your hand, not your knuckles yet. So just here, start slow. And once you can do this, do 10 on one hand, then you'll go to your non-dominant hand. Now, you're gonna learn to switch side to side, but notice how my right hand's lower. You gotta keep both bullets in the chamber, so to speak. So you wanna go up here, and then then alternate. But notice that I'm not going through it. I'm not hitting it super hard. If I do, my, my timing will be off. So, one, two, one, two. Now once you got that, you can just start to, the speed comes after that. Now, say you get that, which I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna take some time, you gotta get some rhythm, get some practice, and it's a great way to start your, your uh, workouts. Now, you can take it another level. You can start using your knuckles, and then going back to that side edge of the hand. So, knuckles, knuckles, and then you alternate. Notice I'm keeping that same motion here, so I'm not going any lower, because that will throw my timing off. And then what you can do is you can mix and match. And then it's all about the timing and rhythm, so you can just, you don't even have to look at it, because it's all about the feel. And will this make you a knockout artist? Absolutely not. But it will score you cool points at the gym. Stretching it out. This is what trainers do. We stretch it out. We're doing our off time. Yep. We don't waste any time. Stretch. We kill, but we also chill. Killing, chilling. Chillin'. Yes. Yep. Word. Word. From the ages of, I want to say 13 to I want to say 1920, I was in an unstable situation. I lost my home um, when I was about 13 years old. I came home from school one day and we had got evicted from the place I was born, living at all my life, my entire life. So it was hard as a kid, you know, it was embarrassing and it was a rough thing for me because until that point I had lived a, what I thought was a great life in a building where as you know, um, it was working people and it was a co-op type building and 
It was a great place to live growing up, a swimming pool. Although it was in the hood, Brownsville, Brooklyn, it was like, okay, it was like heaven on earth for me. So losing my home was rough for me, and then it, as well as just the separation of my mom. You know, me and my mom was separated for some time. We were living in different places. And for me, life was just, you know, like hills and valleys, roller coasters, you know, and I had to make it on my own. So falling into boxing and developing a career, even, you know, kind of late in the sense where I was 17, 18 years old, developing a career uh, that became a career, a rough career as a heavyweight, and succeeding, becoming, getting to the top, becoming a heavyweight champion is a big, for me, a big, um, I want to say credit. I got credit to my strength, but at the same time, I want to show people. I want to show other people that you know, don't give up, man, because there's plenty of people who told me, you ain't going to make it, champ. I'm, I embarked on this mission to become a heavyweight champion when I was 18 years old. And here I am. I've done it twice, and I'm still trying to do it again. Not trying, excuse me. I'm going to do it again. That's the goal. That's what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm focused. I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious about what I want to accomplish as a person. I want to become a heavyweight champion for the third time. I have everything it takes. I've already proven in the past. I just feel like, you know, now's the time, and I just, I'm looking forward to a great 2015, to, you know, fighting, hopefully fighting Vladimir Klitschko. Not hopefully, fighting Vladimir Klitschko, knocking him out and becoming a heavyweight champion for the third time. And letting the whole world hear me say, let's go champ, let's go champ, let's go champ. I want all the crowd, I want, all the, I want, I want a stadium full of people saying, let's go champ, let's go champ. That's when I know <laughs> everything's been, <laughs> everything's accomplished, you feel me? And that's when I'm gonna knock them out. And that's when the whole world's gonna come together, man, because this ain't about, this ain't about s skin color or race or religion. This is just about people inspired because they see me. I was 367 pounds at home, fat, depressed, you know, wanting to commit suicide, just in the bottom, financially in debt, ruined. Everybody was against me. The whole world, I felt I felt like I was in a prison. My own prison, aside from all the bad people that had took a piece of me. I was at the bottom. And then one day I started calling myself champ. Because I knew there was a champion in me. I, 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 I defeated and retired George Foreman. I lost my title to Lennox Lewis. I defeated Sergey Lyakovich with one second left on the clock to win the WBO championship. I fought Vitaly Klitschko with one arm for 12 rounds with a torn bicep. I went home depressed, flat broke, nothing. One day I said, Shannon, this is a champ in you, man. You gotta turn it on, champ. First things first, my name ain't Shannon, no more. My name is Champ. My name ain't Cannon, that's just some tag. My name is Champ. Because you are what you say you are, you feel me? First things first is the label. You ain't calling me Shannon. You ain't calling me Cannon. You ain't calling me bro. You calling me champ. And I'm gonna call you champ. Cause it's a champ in everybody. It's a champ in everybody. You just gotta bring that out. When I was at the bottom, it was no other way. So when champ destroys Shannon totally, and which is the only way to do, that's when I'm gonna know I'm gonna be heavyweight champion in the world. Cause it's all within me. Nobody can't take it away from me. It's within me. Look at me. I'm a machine. Look at me. self-motivated they can't stop me they can't stop me cuz I can't stop me they can't stop me cuz I can't stop me this is beyond me this is beyond me call it God call it creator call it what you want it's bigger than that it's bigger than that this is big it ain't about me I'm just the vessel this ain't about me this ain't no make I'm the man no this ain't about Shannon just forget him this is about the champ, the champ in you, the champ in you, you the champ, you the champ, you at home, you the champ. I'm just proof. I'm just the vessel to tell you. Let's go champ ain't mine, it's just words. It's just words. It's, I'm just the vessel bringing it to you. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. You a doctor? Let's go champ. You a plumber? Let's go champ. You a cab driver? Let's go champ. You a surgeon? Let's go champ. A computer tech? Let's go champ. You a trainer? Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. That's right, it's the champ in all of y'all. It's the champ in everybody. It's all about turning it on. It's all about positivity. That's right. That's the root of it all, positivity. Being positive. Being positive, walking away from negativity, 
negative music, negative television, negative food, negative places, negative things that you put in your body is negative. No, it ain't about, it's about positivity. Putting positive things in yourself, man. Positive television, positive websites, things that's gonna make you a better person, man. Eating right, training, working hard. Whether it's on a job, man, that's right. Working hard to better yourself, man. And don't give it away, partying and drinking and hanging out. Just don't burn, buying clothes and all that. Just don't give it away. Just don't give it away. You feel me? Work hard. Do something with yourself, man. That's what it's about. That's the type of motivated speaking I am. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of BB3 TV. Be sure to head over to BillyBeck.com where you get some cool free stuff and take it to the next level. Hey, and while you're here, be sure to hit the subscribe button somewhere below and share this video with your friends.